Hey everybody, it's Jeff. I hope you guys are all doing really good today. Um, this is going to be part three of the uh, British B-Type Armored Lorry by Mini Art. Okay, um, just a quick side note. I haven't got the paint yet. Um, I have some of the colors, but I'm still waiting on a few that I need. But um, I ordered the paint, the quick story. I ordered the paint on the 4th of May from uh, Sprue Brothers in uh, Liberty, Missouri. Okay, they're about 600 miles from me. Uh, they shipped it the 4th, did a great job of getting it out, um, gave me a tracking number and everything. On the 5th, it was in Denver, Colorado, which is about a little over 100 miles from me. Uh, the 6th, it was in Colorado Springs, Colorado, which is about 50 or 60 miles away from me. And then on the 7th, it was in Queens, New York, like 1,700 miles from me. How I got to Queens, New York, I got no idea. Um, it set in Queens overnight. I guess they were probably like, what are we going to do with this? The 9th, it went back to Denver, and now it's here. It's here in Pueblo, and um, let's hope maybe I'll get it today. But uh, that little package of paints probably traveled uh, oh, 3,500, 4,000 miles just to get to me from 600 miles away. Anyway, just a quick story. Uh, just um, one other little thing is I found a really good article about this kit on the uh, in the modeling news. Uh, it's got pictures of the sprues and it talks about the kit and it also has some pictures of the original vehicle. Apparently we won't, they only built a couple of these and um, they were actually made from uh, double-decker buses so they got a couple of double-decker buses and stripped them down, basically the frame, and put the armor on them. Um, they were using them in a couple of different situations by the Navy. Uh, I think the idea was they were going to raid uh, airship bases. You know, that they used the airships for spotters over the uh, English Channel. The Germans used it anyway. <laughs> um, they were very slow, very heavy. The armor was just more than the chassis and the engine could take. So they didn't use them for very long. Okay, I have no idea where the originals ended up. Um, lost to history. I don't, I'm sure there's none of them anywhere. But there's only one picture. So Mini Art, you know, did their best from the one picture to figure out the details. Obviously, they knew what the chassis looked like for the double-decker uh, uh, LGOC buses. But as far as the armor and stuff in the back there, you know, best guess. Okay, I'm going to put a link to that article uh, in the description along with a link to the uh, instructions with my notes on it and the spreadsheet I'm using. Uh, spreadsheet, spreadsheet's working out great for me. Um, some of you guys are like, ah, I don't see the point. Some guys are like, hey, that's a great idea. So if you want to look at it, it's fine. Uh, it's all for fun. No big deal one way or the other. Anyway, let's go down to the bench and um, we'll see if we can get some more of the engine put together. Okay, be right back, guys. Let's get started on step two which is the cylinder heads and the push rods. <clears throat> here's what we completed in step one. Yeah, I've still got this little box to glue on here. I called it a magneto before, but I'm not sure just exactly what it is. <clears throat> Magnetos generate electricity and create a spark. This one's not connected to anything that would be you know, it would be a generator or any kind. So, anyway, you can see the little hole they drilled in it. Those are for the spark plug wires. So, those are 
uh, 0.3 millimeters, I believe, be the right size. I've already tested and the, the spark plug wires will slip through. I'm not going to put that on quite yet because I want to make sure I've got room to work on this other stuff. So let's set this aside for right now. Put it in a cup. Okay, here are the spark plugs. These are so super tiny. Here's some of the four, I don't know if they're intake or exhaust, but four push rods and four push rods and the two cylinder heads. Okay, this is, uh, we got ED7 two times, ED19 uh, four times, and ED18 four times. And they'll go on top of here. I'm not going to glue them to the engine yet for painting purposes, but I'll show you. Um, first thing is, the holes in the bottom where the uh, push rods go, if I can, you can see it, are undersized. So I took a 1.25 millimeter drill bit. I just reamed them just a little bit so that the push rods would go in there. Okay, you don't want to do it very much, but just enough to where they'll fit. And this is keyed too. There's a little tab right at the top. And there's a... Let's see if I can get this. Right there's a little locating uh, slot right there. So these are set on like so. I can get it to do it. Uh, there's not much of a space for locating. But that's where they go. And the push rods will go underneath them. Uh, and there's a little dot. Very small to see that the push rods will touch. Um, that's where the camshaft raises them. Apparently there's two cams on this engine. One for each side. I'm going ahead and put the push rods on both of them and line them up good and make sure everything's nice and square and then we'll hold them on the top of the engine and get the spark plugs lined up. Uh, I found in the last one I built if you put the spark plugs on first there's no real uh, locating place for them and you kind of just have to eyeball them and get them approximately where they need to go. So let me get these together. Um, you need two of these for one cylinder head and two of these for the other. And there, there's an obvious difference if you look close. And then two of these. And two of these. Or not, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, um, the big end of these go in these holes. And the small end points down. Okay, let me do those off camera real quick and get them lined up and then I'll show you just what we're talking about. Okay, I'll be right back. Here we go. Cylinder heads with the uh, push rods on them. Okay, I've, I've given them a couple minutes to kind of firm up. So shouldn't be too bad. Here's the what you need to do with these when you glue them in of course boy they're very very the uh, place to locate them is very very tiny but these these need to line up with little little uh, bumps on the engine that's what they look like okay the next thing we need to do is get the spark plugs on there uh, spark plugs are going to be, I can't even get it in, in frame here. The spark plugs are going to be a different color, but uh, they're so tiny just to touch with the brush will take care of them. 
So there's really pretty much no um, location mark on the inside of the cylinder heads for the spark plugs. But on the outside, there's a little divot here. So we want to go ahead and put one on each side and uh, then test fit and make sure they clear okay. So let me go ahead and do that off camera. This is just so tiny. There's a slight little depression right there. But I'll get those on there and then I'll show you what they look like, okay? Maybe if I put it down you can see. There's just a little depression right here, but there's nothing on this side. The glue's not really dry yet, so I don't want to handle them, but you can see the spark plugs. Okay. Uh, just a word of caution. These spark plugs, if you put very much glue on there, they're just going to disappear. They're going to turn to mush. Okay, so it's it's best off just to be really, really light with the glue. You know, get them in place and leave them alone. Uh, very much glue and you won't have a spark plug. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to glue this to the engine yet, but that's what they look like. So that's pretty much all of step two. Um, I'll be painting these, I think, gunmetal, and then I'll come back and I'll paint the spark plugs white later. So let's go ahead and set that aside and let it uh, dry really, really well. So we'll put that aside and put the engine aside. And let's go back up to a different camera and we'll continue. Here. This is all the parts for the clutch. We'll put that together and keep it separate from the engine for painting purposes. Okay, let's see if we can go a little closer here. And a little farther out, maybe. Okay. There's our box. I don't know if you can, you can barely, barely see the little holes in it. For the spark plug wires. Okay. And. It'll go with the spark plug wires. With the holes painted facing toward the back. Sit just right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and get just a little bit of glue on that shelf. We'll give it a second for the glue to start to soften the plastic. We'll put a little bit more. Okay. We got that on. trying to get this all uh, on camera. Okay. So that's how that goes. Boy, that's just not sitting right there. Give me a second here, guys. That's a little bit better. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go with the engine right now. Let's go ahead and set this aside to dry real well. And we'll get going with the clutch. Let's see. That's more of the last step. Here's the clutch right here. Now these spark plug wires, I think I've talked before, they're, they're all routed wrong. Uh, Miniart has them going completely the wrong order, wrong place. 
they're supposed to go through this tube, which I made up a tube with spark plug wires on it. Okay, and we'll be using that once we start getting everything assembled. Okay. Um, and there's little, they give us little photo etch ends, they're uh, PE10, to be folded and put over the wires, but you know, in the last one I did, they just didn't look right. They looked really oversized, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or not. I haven't decided yet. Let's go on over here to, let's see, back this out a little bit. This is another part of step four, and we'll get the basic clutch put together. So we've got, let me turn the overhead light on. Maybe that would help a little bit. Yeah, it fills in a little bit. Okay. There's A6. BC4. Let's go ahead and do this. I learned this little trick from Peter at Odd Scale Modeling. Well, that's why we got a problem. I'm trying to work upside down. <laughs> there we go. That makes more sense. I'm trying to move everything around. It's all mirrored. Okay. A6, BC4, A7, and A39. That's the clutch, okay? Nothing much to it. It goes together real easy. Okay, the... The hole through this was a little undersized. So I did I did ream it just barely with a drill bit. I don't remember what size it was, but it's not hard to figure out. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue that. We want to make sure we square it all up. Ooh, don't want to dump the glue. Okay. All right, we'll give that a second to firm up. This will go on the back of the engine. Okay, I haven't even tested it. It's pretty tight, but good. Okay, this will not be glued on until we get some painting done. But it's good to check and make sure your fit's okay. This will go in here. Okay. And this will go, let's see, let's go ahead and just put a little glue here on the Okay, and of course I swapped it over the side. It's fine. It's there's no problem there. This will go here. Just like so. Let's do it this way. Put a little. Glue there first. Get it to firm up. Okay. OK, 
Okay, there's our clutch. I'm going to kind of mess with it here a little bit till uh, I get things, till it starts to set up, and then I'll make sure everything's nice and square. On step five, the, let's see here, BC4 will be replaced. We're not even going to use that. BC19 is the upper radiator hose, and I'm upper radiator hose and I'm not going to fit that for a little while. So this one here is going to be, I'll paint it. I haven't decided yet if I'll paint it a black or maybe a copper color just for a little bit of variation. I'll figure that out. And uh, I've looked at some of the uh, pictures of engines and most of them are black. But I know in a lot of the older vehicles the radiator hoses were copper. So Nothing really to do on that step there. Let's go ahead and get step six done, which will be the transmission. Okay, and let's see, step six. Here's six. Take these little pieces out of here. There's A38. A37. We got a little hair there. It's A21. A20. and a 40 okay we'll make up our transmission this won't take but a couple minutes to put together okay this has got some holes here for a like a skid plate that'll go over it later i can't tell i take my glasses off to see and i can't tell if we're in focus Let's see if we can get a little closer here. Okay. That's not too bad. As you can see these little holes here. That's for a skid plate that'll go on there. So that's the bottom. So right now we're going to be doing this. We need to put A37 on this side, A40 on the other, and A20 on the top. So A30, let's see here. This is A37. It'll go right here. Okay. Be real careful not to. Let's do this. You don't want to get your fingers where you're gluing. Okay, we'll get a little glue on here. Then we'll go over here. Same thing on this side. Line everything. Yeah, I still got a couple little parting lines on here I need to clean up. I can do that once the glue sets up. And then this will go here. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping. 
that paint will be here today and I can start getting a few things ready. and go there a little bit. Okay, and then this goes on the front here, and it's keyed only goes on one direction about like so. so let's put just a tiny bit of glue on there way too much Okay, that's step six. We'll let this stuff uh, firm up a little bit. And uh, I believe this will be aluminum. Nope, it says here it's black. So I'll paint it black and uh, we'll be ready to put it in the truck once we get to that point. Alrighty guys, I'm not going to make these videos super long. I'll try and keep them a little shorter and a little more frequent. So I think that's going to do it for today. Okay, so we'll talk to you real soon, okay? Have a great day, and uh, I'll be back soon. Okay, Bye-bye.